Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, I'm Pascal and this is Troy. For the last four years and 180 episodes, we've circumnavigated Australia, culminating with a very demanding year refitting our 1969 Australian built Clansman 30 sloop rigged yacht and sailing her across the Great Australian Bight. Now we've returned to our home state, we're taking the time to explore some of the places we didn't get the chance to see as much of before. Join us each week for more great sailing, fishing and adventure as we cruise the West Australian coast. Hi everyone, you've caught me at the office. You may not think of it this way, but I do spend a lot of time in front of the computer um, putting together free range sailing. And I'm really grateful for everybody that has helped support us to help keep us independent and putting, giving us a bit of a weekly wage every week for all the work that we put in. So for all of you that have reached out and supported us on Patreon or on PayPal or recently bought t-shirts from the t-shirt campaign, from the bottom of our hearts, thanks so much. You're keeping it going every week for a really large audience and we're really grateful that you can allow us to do this. So things are probably a little bit more serious than usual as we're trying to keep up with our friends on their 40 foot catamaran, the Cruising Kiwis. Keep up! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where we're at. Uh, I wonder how they'd go if they had their main sailor. Mm. Then they might come um, give it to us. Maybe that's why they didn't put it up, make it a fair. I think they just like sailing at a main tail like we do. Yeah. <laughs> We're making our make a pretty good speed, just our normal. We'd make a lot more speed, I think, if we didn't have that second reef, but we'd just be over a bit more. The cruisers. No, we've got the first reef in. Yeah, if we were if we had Unreef. a full main up, we'd squeeze a bit more out, but we wouldn't be on a cruising trim, would we? We'd be on a racing trim when we go over. I can't be beaten by a 30 footer! <laughs> mm, I might have to shake out a reef if they're going to put their mainsail up. <laughs> Reefing lights still You gotta turn the engine on! <laughs> One of those pesky Kiwis! I'll get you next time! While we found a nice sheltered anchorage behind Long Island, this young eagle found it anything but a welcome place to stop.
just next to us, somewhere in that vicinity, lies the wreck of the Batavia. And we had wanted to visit it last time we were here, but we didn't get favourable conditions. And yesterday we came and scoped out approximately where the dive site was. Uh-huh. 155 metres. There. Oh wow, we're really close to it. So I reckon it's just on the outside of those breakers, in theory. We've moved the main boat up here and we're getting re ready to go for a dive. For those of you that didn't watch our very first episode in the Abrolhos, you probably should check it out. But uh, just a little bit about the Batavia, it was the flagship of the Dutch East India Trading Company and it was bound for Batavia, which is now known as Java, with a whole lot of building material, bullion and things like that to establish and uh, build the city of Batavia in the Spice Islands. It was the biggest ship of its time, so it was a big deal when it crashed into the reef here and there were a lot of people on board. And we went into detail about the, the mutiny that followed once they were wrecked on the island. Um, but we might leave that for you to go and check out in the first video that we made. It actually is a special day today because today marks the 392nd anniversary of the ship wrecking on the shores here. We're looking forward to seeing it. I think there's a few really bits, big bits down there that uh, couldn't get taken away or put into museums. Things like anchors and things like that, but we'll see. <laughs> We'll see what remains and um, what sort of fish life and things like that are down there. We've got the cruising kiwis coming to meet us in their tender. Uh, yeah, so we're going to jump on in. Diving on the wreck of the Batavia was even better than we imagined. To see these massive 400 year old cannons and anchors encrusted with coral and teeming with marine life was an incredible sight. The Batavia Although probably the largest 18th century ship to wreck on this coastline, was certainly not the first or the last. Many 17th and 18th century European vessels fell victim to this treacherous coastline. These ships were often bound for the Spice Islands via the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. As they had no way of precisely determining longitude, when they crossed the Indian Ocean, many would only turn north once they sighted mainland Australia. Too often, Instead of sighting land, they would hit one of the many low-lying islands and reefs scattered along this coastline, giving it the name of the Shipwreck Coast. If you're wondering about the apparent friendliness of the fish and the abundance of lobster, it's because the areas surrounding the wreck of the Batavia are a wildlife sanctuary zone.
What might not be obvious is the presence of both warm and cold water marine life due to the Lewin Current bringing a stream of warm tropical water south to the islands in a place which would otherwise be a temperate zone. One of the many measures to protect our reef fish in Australia is to have closed seasons during their respective spawning periods. The Abrolhos Islands is a key breeding ground for the bald chin groper and they are completely protected from all fishing for a couple of months during springtime. We've had a pretty good time with the with the cruising kiwis, um, the chaotic kiwis. So we need to go though. There's um, there's the last of the high pressure system pushing through now, giving us a bit of a southerly, and in a few days that's going to change. It's going to be a really big um, low pressure system come through down in the 900s. So we're going to um, rather than take shelter here or taking shelter on the mainland here, we're going to use those southerlies to go up to Shark Bay. Um, and we'll find shelter when we're up there. I expect it's going to be one or two days of pretty pretty hectic conditions, but um, we should be alright. Because we could take shelter here at Port Gregory, but then we'd be sort of set back a week. Um, and even though we're not really hurrying at the moment, you know, you need to move along. So um, that's sort of the story. We've had a good time here at the Abrolhos. We pretty much ticked off what we wanted to do. Um, and now it's time to, to keep trucking. So we'll We'll do that now. What time is it? It's 8.30, that's our departure time, so we're out of here. When we expect strong winds during the night, it's our practice to reduce sail area together before sunset while the light is good and the conditions are still benign. Seems to be going quite fast. Making um making pretty good time as usual when we're wing on wing. The seas are probably about a metre and a half and there's about a metre and a half and a two metre swell coming from the southwest. So we're again, yeah, a little bit of rock and roll. Um 
we look like we're going to get in somewhere between nine and midday tomorrow morning, which is really great. Although we're going to have probably one like the last mile should um, should probably bash our heads in just a little bit until we get into shelter. But then we've got a range of shelters for the big system that's coming, which is great. Pascal's luxuriating on our um, on our couch. We'll have a look. What do you think, Pascal? Are you comfortable? I'm so comfortable. Actually, kind of chilly out there. What's that? It's a bit chilly out there. Yeah, it is. It's like 22 degrees in the water, and it's probably about the same in the air. No, no, not. it's cooler in the air, and also the fact that we don't have the sun. We haven't had the sun all afternoon, which is great for sun protection. Chilly on your bones. The nice thing that we like about our boat is how quiet it is inside. There's not much squeaking, rattling, cracking, thumping, smashing. <laughs> Something in Pasky's cupboard. <laughs> so when we're a wing on wing, it groans a bit more. We've got that. It groans because the ropes are actually... The ropes, yeah. On the other side. <laughs> As you can see, the wind has really boosted this morning. We're also taking it beam on. The wind generator cut out long ago. Um, we had a really fast run wing on wing downwind last night. Um, and now as we're coming in, as predicted, the wind has, let me get this right, veered. It has, oh yeah, no, it's back the compass east, gone from south to east. And now we're on a beam reach. Um, I've reefed the headsail even more. It's reefed further than, we're on a little bit of a rag of the headsail basically. Because I found that with the headsail out it more, we were steering right up into the wind and overpowering. So this is quite comfortable. We're doing six and a half knots. So I'm happy with that. Um, we're going to be getting in in a couple of hours. So we'll probably have to rouse Troy out of bed soon to put away that um, pole that we have the headsail out on. Um, and yeah. It's going to be interesting going into our anchorage because we're going to be going into the wind, but there won't be much fetch, so we'll see how we go. But yeah, this is there's some pretty big steep seas here, and it's really angry sea, really angry ocean. Is it bouncing off the Yeah, I didn't mention that, but I did film them. The Zeitdorf clips are right there, they're looking quite ominous, um, but also very spectacular. I got a bit split, so I altered course a little bit more to port, so we're just a little bit away. The cliffs get their name from another Dutch East Indies trading vessel, the Zoetdorp, that was wrecked here in 1712. The vertical nature of the Zoetdorp cliffs, which are over 250 metres high in some places, act to rebound the swells coming from the southwest, giving very confused seas up to 10 miles offshore. In preparation for raising the headsail pole, Troy released the aft guy and attached it with a slipped hitch to the shroud as a way of keeping it secure but out of the way.
Well, that was a hell of a sale. That was um, 147 nautical miles in 24 hours, 31 minutes. <laughs> we had to um, we had to motor the last last two and a half miles in here because we were like dead to weather and pretty limited room to maneuver and it's pretty shallow. It's about two meters, so I didn't really want to fool around. So we just motored in and now we've um, we found good protection from the southeast and the east. Tomorrow we might just have a bit more of a look around. Um, we'll have a little bit of time before the big blow comes. We'll just see what's down there. But at the moment, you know, I'm pretty happy with this and the, and the surge from the, um, the swell out there is not too bad. So it was pretty good. It was um, it was a pretty comfortable sail for the speed that we did. I think we've been hardened up by the by the bite, <laughs> but um, I still managed to get a fair bit of spray in my face this morning, which always is a little bit annoying. But I'm over it now. It's good. I might have a coffee. We made it. If you enjoyed the video, hitting the like button helps to get this video suggested to like-minded people. Thanks in advance and see you next time.